Today we're going to show you the basics of indoor plants, gardening 101, how not to kill them, what they need to live and how you can get the most out of them. And remember, everything that we speak about and all the products are available from your local builders. We're going to cover how to choose the plant, what to feed it and if you get any bugs, how to get rid of them. Today we're here to take the murdering out of indoor plants. How many of you have purchased awesome indoor plants and within two months, well, they're sticks. There are a couple of very simple rules that we need to go through. Um, get it right and you'll have gorgeous flourishing indoor pot plants and all of this is available from builders. No matter how much you decorate your home, how many paintings you put up in your lounge suites that you purchase, a home is simply not a home without a few pot plants scattered around. Now, when you're purchasing your pot plant, here's the first thing you've got to think about. How big is this guy going to grow that I'm about to purchase? Will it live in the light that we have and do I like it? most importantly. So let's go through the, the basics. Number one is, let's talk about a few different ones. This little guy over here is called an aglonema. An aglonema, one of the toughest, I can't kill you, will not be murdered kind of pot plant that is probably what everybody wants. It can cope in really low, low light um, and does the job incredibly well. We're going to go from the extreme to the I will die quite quickly if I'm not looked after. This is a little maiden hair fern, and ferns are lovely in the home, but if you are not prepared to water it as often as it requires, then don't go for this little guy. So how do we finish this off? We buy a little pot plant like this from our local builders, it looks gorgeous, we take it, and we invariably put it into a little container, something like this. And you know, with containers these days, wow, I love it. There is a color and a style to suit your home. Whether you want the bright, whether you want something a bit more sublime, um, there really is a container, and we call them pot holders, just for you. Be very careful though, and here's the trick. A lot of them don't come with holes. No holes means no drainage. So if you put your little maiden hair fern, like I've got, pop it in here, well that's great, you think your job is done. And once every four or five days, you're gonna go and put some water in there. The trick is, that's not how you do it, especially if it doesn't have drainage holes. So what you've gotta do is take the plant out. The best way that I suggest you do this is put it in the bath, literally put it in the bath, take your little watering can, water the plants, wait for the water to drain away so that when you pick it up there's no more dripping then put it back in its little pot holder and put it back in its place where it's desired that is the best way to water it if you simply add water add water add water and build it up in here eventually the guy's going to drown i mean its roots are going to rot the water's going to get smelly and you're going to have a dead plant on your hands so as i said rather take the little guy out water it in your bath and then put it back okay so that's the first step that's one option that you can do. But remember, if you're going with that option, a plant like this, yes, it certainly could live in this little pot like this for many, many years. However, if you're wanting, you can see already, look at all its roots over here. And this guy would be very, very happy living in this pot as long as we're feeding it and giving it the right water requirements. If you want to up your chances hugely, and I mean hugely, on being able to make sure that your little pot plants are going to live and sustain, I strongly suggest that you transplant them into a bigger pot where this plant can actually grow and be happy and have all the perfect conditions for the next 10 to 15 years. That's how long an investment. So if you're prepared to put the time in, well, you're going to get the reward. So let's take a look at this little pot here. Being designed specifically for indoor plants. Why is that? Because have a look at the bottom here. Can you see that? That is a specific little drainage, almost like a little grid. Do you see that? It's got the grid at the bottom. It's got that little extra there. So when you put this guy in the bottom of your pot, there's actually your drainage hole. Now what you can do at this point, you can choose to either keep that plugged up because it's got a little plug at the bottom keep it plugged up or you just simply take it out so the little grid in it goes and i am going to be taking this guy out because this is how i believe is the safest way to work in terms of any pots like this so in it goes and now we can literally take this aglonema we can plant it into here and give it a longer longer life a much longer life so all that we're needing for this is a couple of simple steps we put in a few drainage pebbles and drainage pebbles literally can go on top of the grid you don't need anything too smart and fancy about that 
pop those in, all it does is it stops the potting soil from clogging up all those holes and getting into that well at the bottom, which is what we don't want. Now, the other option that you can use is just a bit of shade cloth or, or even a bit of bidim, which is the matting that you'd use when you're doing paving or putting down pebbles. Some good old fashioned potting soil. And remember, you're not going to be schnup here and take soil from the bottom of the garden or from a plant that died and that you've still got in your bathroom and you're going to take that and try and recycle it. No, that could be full of pathogens. It could be full of weeds. It could have bad diseases in it. So just use plain potting soil, which you get in bags from your local builders. And then in goes the soil. And the potting soil has been designed specifically for pot plants. It makes sense. So let's use the right stuff. No? Okay, in it goes. What we're going to do is we're going to fill this pot up, the standard rule, and as we're going to get to about halfway. Once we're about halfway, what we're going to do then, even it out, all right? Take our pot plant in its pot still and have a look. Okay, there's the base of the soil. No, it needs to go up just a little bit higher. You know, you don't want to bury this guy too deep because that's going to look odd, all right? Just a little bit more soil in, and then we know we're good to go. So in it goes, and remember I've added nothing into this potting soil, literally as it is, right yo, Bob's your uncle, now what I do, take my hand, just firm it down, firm it down gently, right, there we go, nice and firm down, even, that's what we're looking for. Now we're going to take our pot plant. Our little aglonema is now going to be set free into a much bigger pot. And it all makes sense, guys. I mean, here in this little pot, it's got limited soil, limited moisture it can hold. Its roots can't go very far. Whereas if we put it in a big guy like this, well, its roots can grow. It can grow proportionate to the size of the pot. So when we take it out, simply turn it upside down, squeeze it, squeeze it very simply, and out it comes. And you can see... These little roots are going to be set free inside there. So take the little guy, pop him in. Beautiful. All right. Just like that. Position him in the middle of the pot. All right. And then we just take our potting soil and we just start filling in all the little gaps around our pot plant. Now at this point, you could get really creative. And I'm going to show you just how. So let's get this little baby in. Firm in the soil around it making sure that we're filling it up. But the critical point about all of this is don't bury the plant deeper than its original soil level. And that's really important, or else you're gonna be like strangling the plant, okay? Not higher than its original soil level. So I need a little bit more potting soil in here. Let me get that finished off, and then I'm gonna show you a quick trick about how to pimp up your pots. All right, soil is in, we've got the right soil level. Let's just take a check so that we understand what we've done. Hold it back here. Look at that. The soil level is not right to the top of the pot. That's really important. You see there's a bit of a gap here. The reason for that is when you water it, the water doesn't overflow out of it. Plus, we want to finish it off. We want it to look cool, you know. I don't want to look at the black soil. Of course not. So what do we do? They're awesome options. One of these beautiful black decorative pebbles. You can pick up all different colors from your local builders. I love taking these and simply just putting them around the plant, and that just finishes it off, you know. Um, really gives it that slick look that you're wanting, um, and you can get them in many, many different colors. So we can pop those around, and just gives a nice slick finish look. The other option is you can take some bark chips, which you can also pick up at your local builders in smaller packets or in larger packets. Take those and literally just put them around. In gardening, we call this a mulch, but you can call it just pimping your pot, you know. All right. So there we go, pop those all around, finishes it off and makes it look good. All right, here's another really cool idea, especially if you're limited with space. You can get awesome containers like this where I've got an anthurium in it. And anthurium produces beautiful flowers that almost look fake. They're really tough. Inside it, in the middle, you'll recognize this one, an aglonema, the same as this guy. And this is called a peace lily. Flowers continuously within your home. It'll probably have six weeks without a flower. All of these can grow in low light or in medium to high light. The only thing is any indoor plant, and this is a rule, any indoor plant does not like direct sunlight. If it's got direct sunlight, the leaves are going to burn a telltale sign, burnt leaves on the edge, or actual splotches on it. Okay, so how have you killed all your plants? Well, probably through this. Most importantly, it's about watering. Any indoor plant, water once every 7 to 10 days. That is more than enough. In a container about this size, probably one glass of water. 
one glass, 250 mils in this once a week. The bigger your container goes, obviously if we're looking at one like this, you'd probably use one and a half cups of water. The bigger you go, two cups, once every seven to 10 days. Most times indoor plants expire simply because we've overwatered them and we've killed them with kindness. So what if you get any hojos, nunus or pests? Let's show you how you can prevent that. The one way is by using this. These are called wonder wipes. They've been specifically designed for pot plants, all right? It's not a wonder wipe that you're going to take for your kids or something that you're going to find from the kitchen. These are specifically designed, nice and sensitive, and one of the biggest problems with indoor pot plants is the buildup of dust on the leaves. And probably once every three months, I would suggest get some of these and literally just wipe down the leaves. As soon as you get a layer of dust on the leaves, they actually can't transpire, they can't grow, they can't breathe. So take that off and all you do is just grab the leaf very gently. I mean, this is like twice a year job, so you know, take your time and do it. The other way, put them all in the bath and if you've got one of those spray shower heads, give them a good spray, clean them off, they feel a bit fresh and away you go. All right, so that's the one thing that you can prevent. The other thing is don't think that you've been kind to your plants by on a nice day, take them outside, leave them outside and think they've got some fresh air and I can take it back inside now. No, you're gonna kill it. Leave the pot plant where you've left it in the home. Now, a couple of problems. Generally, on pot plants, you'll see like white fungi stuff growing. That almost looks like cotton wool. And that is a common, common problem in indoor pot plants. And it's called mealybug. And mealybug you can get rid of by simply using something like this. It's called insecticide granules. Follow the instructions. You sprinkle a little bit around the plant and it'll get taken up into the plant and it will kill the mealybug. The other common problem is scale. Scale can get rid of it with this. And you can also get ready to use aerosols or sprays that you can use. Remember, just ask the guys down at your local builders, what is the best thing for my pot plants? And they'll advise you accordingly. The other problem that we might have is fungal problems. Now fungal problems are primarily, you see spots, those spots getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the leaves turn brown and start falling off. And that you can use an aerosol can, a fungi gun, simply hold it about 30 centimeters away from the plant and give it a spray. That you need to do once a week until there are no signs of the disease. So that's getting rid of your pests and diseases. Now, what else do they need? Well, just like us, plants need food. Remember, it's captured in this pot. Whatever is happening in here, whatever nutrition is in there, that's all it's going to use. So it's important to feed your plants. Now, there's some really cool solutions for lazy gardeners. Take a look at this. These are called grow sticks. Literally, it's a stick that's full of nutrition and as the plant needs it, so it's going to take it up. And they come out like this. According to the size of the pot, all you're going to do is take this little guy, pop it into the soil, one on that side, one on that side, water it. As you're watering it, the plant takes up the nutrition as it needs and it's going to flourish. Remember, plants need nutrition in order to grow. There are other options as well, like Nutrisol or Nitrosol, which you shake up really well, dilute into water, into a watering can, and as you're watering the plant, so you're feeding it as well. Folks, the really important part about indoor plants is food and watering. If you get those two things right, you're good to go, and you're not going to be the plant murderer that you've been known for in the past. Remember, everything that we've gone through on indoor plants, what to use, how not to kill them, is available from your local builders. <laughs>